This lesson today is on functions and you'll notice that our essential question says how can you identify functions from different mathematical representations? So that's something I want you to be thinking about as you watch the video. We need to first define some vocabulary. The first one is a relation. A relation is simply a set and a set meaning a group of ordered pairs. A set or group of, whoops, of ordered pairs. At any point, if you need to pause the video so that you can finish writing something down, um, please do that. Don't keep the video um, rolling if you don't have everything written down. An example of a relation would be something like this. We're going to put it in brackets and we're going to list some ordered pairs. It's as simple as that. This is an example of a relation. Okay. The next one um, that's very, very important and one of our focuses for today is a function. The first thing I want you to think about and identify with a function is that it is a dependent relationship. It's a dependent relationship where one quantity depends on another. Where one quantity depends on another quantity. Okay, that's really, really important. I want to give you some verbal examples of functions first. Um, one example of a function is how much I eat, how much I eat depends on how hungry I am. That's true, isn't it? If you're not very hungry, then you're not going to eat a lot. How much I eat depends on how hungry I am. That is an example of a function. Another example of a function would be my cell phone bill, my cell phone bill, even though you may not pay it yourself, is a function of how many minutes of data I go over. So we know that on data plans, if you don't have unlimited, if you go over your amount of data, you're going to pay more. So your bill is a function of or depends on how many minutes of data I go over. I want you to notice that I changed the vocabulary here. Function of is the same thing as depends on. So you need to get used to interchanging that. Okay, one more example. The number, not hashtag, the number of baskets we shoot, if we're in a basketball game, determines the score. The number of baskets we shoot determines the score. We know that if we shoot a lot of baskets, then we have a better chance of making baskets, and so therefore the score will be higher. Again, I changed the vocabulary. I didn't use the words depends on. I used the words determine. So several different ways you can see this. One thing I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video, and I want you to think of five dependent statements similar to what we wrote. Think of your own topics, but I want you to think of five sentences that would be examples of functions and have those ready to share in class. Okay, so take the time now and pause the video. Our next vocabulary word is domain. Domain is simply the set of all the x values. We can also call the domain the input. That's another way to refer to it. 
It's just all the x values in our relations or our function. So if we look back at the relation up at the top that I gave you, the domain for this would be the x values from each ordered pair. So it would be 2, 3, and 4. Okay? And then if domain is the set of all the x values, then what do you think range is? Range is simply the set of all the y values. Okay? And from our example above, we have 6, 8, and 9. Now I need to go back and um, give you a few more definitions of a function. I forgot to add that in. I was jumping on to domain and range. So we, I gave you examples of verbal. So let's talk mathematically what this might look like. So mathematically, when we define a function, we need to think of it as every input, so every x value, has exactly one output, which basically means that the input, the x values, cannot repeat. And we're going to look at some examples on our foldable. Something else important to remember is that y always depends on x. Y always depends on X. Okay? If you'll look at your function foldable now, we have different other ways that we can see functions. And the first one is a graph. So if you'll open it up, a graph, here is an example of a relation or function. And the way we determine from a graph is by using the vertical line test. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw vertical lines through our graph. And what we want to happen is we want only one point from the graph to touch each vertical line. And if that's the case, then yes, this is a function. This is a function because only one point touches that vertical line. What I want you to see on the bottom example is if I draw a vertical line right here, we've got one, two, three points that touch that vertical line. So that's why this relation, this graph, is not an example of a function. Okay, so sometimes we're just given a relation, a set of ordered pairs. So remember what we're looking for is does the x value repeat? That's what we're asking ourselves when we're looking at a relation. So we have 2, we have 3, we have 4, we have 6. None of those x values are repeating and so therefore yes, this is a function. In our next relation, if we'll no you notice, we have 8 and we have 8 again. So the x value repeats. That's our input. So that's why this one is not a function. Okay? When we have a table, again, we're looking for the x values to repeat. So let's fill in this first table. Let's fill it in with 3, 6, 4, 7, and 5, 6. This is a function because my x values are not repeating. Notice your y values do repeat. That's okay. The y values can repeat. It's just the x values that we're looking for. Okay, here's one that is not a function. If I have the ordered pairs 3, 7, 4, 3, and 3, 2. Again, all we have to look at is the x column. Notice my 3's are repeating, so it is not a function. 
The last example is a mapping. We're going to use these same coordinates from our tables to put into our mapping. In our mapping, it's always the input or the domain and the output or the range. And so for this first one, I would have 3, 4, and 5 for my input. And then I'm only going to put 6 and 7. We're not going to repeat numbers. The 3, we draw an arrow to the 6. The 4, we draw an arrow to the 7. And the 5, we draw an arrow to the 6. This is a function, and I want you to notice how this one is going to compare to the next one we're going to draw. So again, we're going to put the input or the domain, and then the range. And so we have 3 and 4. On the range, we're going to put, and we're going to put in numerical order, 2, 3, and 7. Oh, no. Good afternoon. And so the 3 goes to the 7, the 4 goes to the 3, and then the 3 to the 2. Notice we have two arrows coming from the domain. Andre Aguavin, Diane Harper.